Hello, I'm here with George at AES in Fresno, California. George is the, is the exclusive vendor of my Phil's probe, and today we're going to talk about preserving the needles on the end of your probe and otherwise extending the life of your probe to get the maximum use out of it so that you can have a relatively long life with a tool that is not a hardware piece like a wrench or a socket that you expect lifetime use out of. So, we've made a lot of improvements in the Fields probes over the years. We've uh, removed some of the fragile parts of it. The body is now made out of some very strong material called Garolite, and this is actually the only one I've ever seen that, I, that, that broke. If, you, if it breaks, you used it as a pry bar, and it's not designed to be a pry bar, it's an electrical testing probe. But there is still one item on it that is of some fragility, and we'll use this broken one to illustrate these five little needles that are on the end of the probe. We have another video which you can watch which shows the benefit of these very small needles. And the benefit of the small needles is the very small amount of, of holes it makes in the insulation of the wire. But they are not robust in terms of really long life because of the nature of the, the small holes. So here's a couple of tips to keep your needles pristine. One is, of course, the instructions on the insert show that you, this is not a twisting probe. It's got five needles in here. You puncture, you pull back the handle, and the spring pushes the, the pins into the insulation of the wire. So if you're doing just voltage testing and you're gentle with it, these needles should last a very long time. Here are the failures that we've seen. The one that's most common is high current items like cooling fans, window motors, wiper motors. It's tempting once you've made an electrical test and say that the module is not providing power or the relay is not providing power and you want to know will the component work. It's very tempting to jumper either ground or 12 volts to the shaft here and see if it works. That's fine if you have a low current device, for example, like a vent solenoid or a purge solenoid or even a variable displacement compressor control solenoid. You can get away with that without any trouble. If you're going for something like a window motor or particularly a cooling fan which draws about 20 amps, you will burn the needles right off the ends. So think about the wire size when you're thinking about do I want to try and turn on this component. If you have 16 gauge wire or higher, that's a low current device. So you can probably get away with jumpering power or ground to the shaft and not do any damage. But if you have a if you have a 14 or a 12 gauge wire, that's a high current circuit. So you don't want to actuate that using the tiny little needles on the probe. So that's one item that we've covered before. Another thing is I live in California, as does George. We have mild climates. Some of you are in cold climates. If your wire is hard and cold, there's a chance that piercing the wire and, and then unpiercing it will actually pull the needle right out of the end. So here's my advice for cold climates. You need to heat the wire, maybe with a, with a, a blow gun, like a hairdryer type heat gun, and soften the insulation. Either that or maybe you want to use a different probe in the wintertime when you have very low temperatures because the needles do have some fragility when it comes to very hard insulation. Old wires that are petrified, as we know some of them are, are more likely to damage those, those needles. So if you can preserve the needles and you don't use it as a pry bar, you should get long life out of the fields probe. This is not a lifetime. We have a six month warranty and generally it will outlast the six months. I have some that I've been using for four or five years, but I of course know to be gentle with the, with the tool, and uh, that's the best way to get long life out of it. So thank you very much for purchasing a Phil's Probe. We, our goal is for you to not have to buy this one a year, but rather get some, get some good life out of it. It's not like a wrench that'll last 50 years. It's, it's gonna deteriorate, but the needle, the needles now are the only part on it that is fragile, and the rest of it is now very robust. The Garolite material does not conduct electricity like our old carbon ones did. There aren't many spark plug wires out there anymore, but if you have an old black one, 
it will shock you if you're next to a spark plug wire that leaks. It'll go right up the carbon and get you. It wasn't a problem with, with our typical 12 volt, 14 volt circuits, but it would be with high voltage. This material's probably rated at about 50,000 volts, so you're not going to get a shock out of it. It is also very strong, so if you've broken it, there has been some abuse going on. This is the only one I've ever seen that is broken, and we have probably three or 4,000 now out with this robust material in the probe body. So thank you very much for buying a Phil's probe, and we wish you success in your electrical testing.